I'm currently putting an LS swap into my 96 Chevy K1500 OBS pickup GMT 400 and there really isn't good um, information on the AC electrical. Lots of things on how to get the brackets. Um, there's different ways that you can do the wiring but I really wanted there to be a good video on how does the factory wiring harness work? So I'm going to go through what the factory wiring harness is and there's there's different things you can do. So um, I'll list a couple options and tell you what I'm going to do. But getting started, this is the C100 terminal. On the back side, this light green wire right here. When you push the AC button, this light green wire right here is uh, is on C7, or excuse me, D7, A, B, C, D, and this is eight, and that's seven. This wire <clears throat> is what gets 12 volts when you say, hey, I want AC, and you push the button. Couple things need to happen before the clutch gets engaged. So the first thing that, that the wiring harness is gonna do, if we follow this wire through, we find it right here. This is the same wire. This plugs in at the canister on the passenger side up against the firewall where the low pressure, it's called a sensor, but it's really just a cutoff switch. It's not really a sensor. It's a cutoff switch. The default position is that this does not have continuity. So the signal stops there. If there is enough pressure on the low side, continuity is restored. So with, with pressure buildup on the low side of the AC system, this cuts across and the signal continues. If there is low, too low of pressure, that you know you, you don't want your AC to turn on. You don't want the clutch to turn on when there's very low pressure because it's pointless. It just wears out your compressor. It's inefficient and bad for your equipment. So this turns off the AC when there's low pressure on the low side or too low of pressure to, to make it not worth it. But if there's enough pressure, the signal of 12 volts continues on this dark green wire. And you're just going to have to trust me on this one because I don't want to trace it through. There's so many green wires, but it is um, this green wire right here. This plugs into the back of my compressor on my 96. It's a 5 liter um, half ton pickup with four wheel drive. This plugs into the back of that sand and air compressor. That's a high pressure cutout. The default position would be connected, continue the signal. However, if the high pressure side gets too much pressure, then it will, it will interrupt this continuity and the signal dies there. That's to protect you from, or your equipment from overpressurizing and you could damage the, your equipment. You could damage your AC compressor or, you know, worst case scenario, blow a line or a seal or something uh, if you overcharge the system, which is very possible in a swap to overcharge the system. So assuming that there is not too much pressure on the high side, the signal continues and that is AC request, which is goes to the PCM to say, hey, we would like AC. Conditions have been met. We would like you to turn on the AC clutch. From there, the computer says, okay. I don't know if it does any other checking or any other, you know, concerns that it has to worry about. I don't think so, but it will then activate the relay. The relay wire comes down, it's right here, goes into the fuse box. If we trace it all the way, we'll find it right here. 
and this goes into the back of this relay, I believe this is ground, that the computer grounds this um, because there's this pink that it crosses with right here. So this light, let me see if I can hold the camera and point at the same time. Um, this is the request to activate the clutch, not the request. This is the, um, the command to activate the clutch. I think it grounds this pink and that connects this orange to this green. That orange is a f one of these fuses here. Uh, I wanted to, oh yeah, it's, it's this, this 10 amp fuse right here. That green wire comes out and activates the clutch. So <clears throat> this wire here, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna feed it through. You'll just have to trust me. It goes um, to here, through a diode to here. And this plugs into the clutch up at the top of my air compressor and will make your, your AC work. There's one more plug not included in this circuit, but it is part of the AC and it, it threw me for a loop. Uh, this plugs into the high side, but it's not involved in any of that circuitry. So it's trying to figure out what, what is the purpose of this plug. So the black wire on this plug, this, this plug, by the way, um, on the 96 and up, I think 96, uh, until LS, they had the air compressor on the top of the engine in the front on the driver's side. There was an airline that had both the input and the output combined in one plug or in one connection, one connection. And on the back of that, there was a, um, a sensor or a plug. And this, this plugged in, the tab was down on mine. I don't think it matters, but this is on the high side on the, the AC line. Black goes to ground. It just, uh, it dies in, in, I think this, this right here, this, um, uh, what, what's the word splice right here. This signal though goes back to the C100 at B8. And I, I found, I, I spent hours trying to find the C100 pinout, even went and bought the Chilton book. It doesn't have it in there. This book is useless. The schematics are wrong for how this works in this book. So it's absolutely worthless. I did find it online. Um, let's see, is this the right one? Yeah. Um, Go here, I think it's this one. I eventually found it and air inlet valve motor feed. Um, I'm not sure um, what that does exactly, but it, it probably moves some door, recirculates your air or something. I don't know. I don't really care. It's okay to leave it on, so I'm going to leave it on. Um, I spent way too long trying to figure out the wiring on this. So what are the options if you're LS swapping? One option is to take the harness. Let's say that you're running a computer that doesn't have a physical request for AC. Relay signal, AC request. These are pins for me, C2, pin 9, and C3. Pin 25, connect them. Just go back down to here and splice them into each other. So when you push the button, it goes through the safety checks and then to the relay. The computer will have no idea that the AC turned on 
but the AC will work. So you can just take C2 pin 9, C3 pin 25, cross them, and your AC will work. Another option is to take this light green wire, you can cut it up by this connection here, and send that to the computer if you're, you're wanting to run it more on the LS system, so that you send LS request for AC, and then you have to wire in the low side and the high side into the LS computer the way it wants it wired. That's a little bit more work, uh, but it gives the LS a heads up, I guess. I, I don't think it really matters to do it that way. It sounds like more work and not worth it. Um, this keeps it all in this one harness. And uh, because I'm using the original hardware, I'm keeping my same compressor and my my lines I'm replacing, but with the same factory replacement lines. So it uh, makes more sense for me to use this harness. But if for some reason in your swap you're using the LS hardware for your AC and you want to just use the wiring on the LS, then the wire that you would need is, is this light green wire here. And then snake it out and send it over to your crosstalk. Um, that's one way. But the way that I'm going to do it, I'm going to leave it exactly how it is. I'm going to send the AC request to the LS computer and get the signal back from the computer to activate the clutch, the AC relay. So both of those are going to go uh, back and forth. And then on the LS, I'm going to have to ground the low side input. And I'll have to see what I need to do about the high side if I need to just leave it out or if I need to ground it one, one way or the other. I'll, um, I'll make it so that the LS computer is being told that the conditions are acceptable. And then I'll physically run the conditions through the request line the way that the 96 did it. So well, that's how you can run your, your AC um, in an OBS swap. Uh, this is for a 96, the 95 was different, the 94 was different, um, 91 was different, and 98 and up was different. So it's it's all going to be, you know, unique. But the essential principles are the same. You need the request signal, you need a low pressure cutout and a high pressure cutout, and then the relay for the, for the clutch. But hope this is helpful.